now automotive royalty today, at least royalty to me, because when I was in my teen years, this was the car. This is a 1967 Bizzarini uh, GT Strada 5300, uh, which stands for 5.3 liters, and you'll find out what those 5.3 liters are in just a minute. This is the road-going version, which is the one I like. I met Mr. Bizzarini. Bizzarini, if you don't know, he was a legendary designer. Ferrari for the, well, the most important years, I think. And then he went to Lamborghini. Then he went out on his own, decided to build his own car. And this is what he came up with. And just one of the sexiest cars. I always thought they were just unbelievable. 327 Chevy Power. You know, that was sort of the thing back in the mid 60s. They were called hybrids. You got European style, European handling, European suspension with the reliability and power of an American drivetrain. And it was quite clever, I think. Uh, don't forget, most European engines were 2.5 liter. Ooh, I mean, three liter was huge, you know. So this was, uh, this was something that, uh, well, there were a lot of these. I have a Monteverdi that had a 440 Chrysler and of course the Shelby Cobra, probably the most famous one. But uh, this is just a legendary car. These are rare. Like so many of the great uh, designers and great cars, not great businessmen. Why they were not more successful, I don't know. There were all sorts of problems that can happen, but just looking at it as a fascinating design and as a beautiful road car, and just even as a piece of functional art. Um, how this one escaped me, I don't know. My buddy Doug Cohen managed to grab this one. Let's bring him in. Doug, congratulations, my friend. Beautiful car. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, this is, Bruce Meyer has one. I drove his too. Uh, this is just fat. Did you do the restoration on it? So I bought, bought it restored. Bought it restored, okay. And how has it been? Pretty easy to live with? Uh, it was restored between 2016 and 2019. I think we had to get a couple of kinks out, but it, it's, it's a beautiful car. It, it drives well. I, my BMW uh, broke down, and, and I daily drove this for two or three days in L.A., and it, yeah. was, it was pretty good. People have no idea what it is, don't they? Most people. No idea. No, you have to be a certain age, and you have to have lived in that golden age of road and track and car and driver when these were just everywhere. And, and Bizzarini, he's still with us, I believe, age 94, something like that. Yeah, so God bless him. Uh, just one of the great designers was involved in the Mura and the Espada and all the legendary Italian cars. Uh, it's a Muncie four-speed, correct? It's a Borg Warner. Oh, Borg Warner four-speed. That's that's right. That's what Corvette used Borg Warner uh, early on. Uh, but I mean, it's all American running gear. So something breaks, go down to a Napa store, and you you know you get what you need. I mean. Does this one have Webers or does it have a four barrel? This one has Webers. Oh, okay, cool. Can we, can we open up and take a look? Absolutely. To me, this is one of the sexiest uh, setups. You know, when the Cobra had the Webers, an American V8 with the Italian Webers, I always thought that was the sexiest look ever. Well, you'll see what I mean in a minute. Well, a very sexy setup. Look how far back the engine sits in the chassis. It's almost what they call front mid-engine, like an SLR. Even that's not a new car anymore. That's 15 years old, 16 years old. Now, to change the plugs, do you have to go in through the floor? It's, it's right here on the dashboard. Oh, oh, that's right. You have to take that panel off. And of course, getting a screwdriver short enough to get in there, <laughs> it looks like, oh, just unscrew that, until you realize you only have this much space, so you have to take a screwdriver, cut it off, <laughs> Make a, yeah, it's the most complicated thing. That's right, you get in through there. And of course, those Webers just look so great sitting there. I never knew if they gave much more horsepower than a big four barrel, because always that debatable thing, but they look cool. They do look cool, that's and cool. I think you're right, I'm not sure either. Yeah, and as you know, as you know, that's my mantra, looking cool is obviously <laughs> much better than actually being cool. But anyway, it's just fascinating. People always may say, where's the other half of the engine? Well. It's, it's right here, it's right in the car. Is it hot inside this thing? It is, it is a warm car, yes, yeah, yeah. because the engine is so far. <laughs> and, it, and I think it was the first design that's that front mid-engine. Right, right. For weight distribution. I just like the understanding. Yes, it is a warm car, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So your wife will not drive in this car with you, I assume. I don't have a wife. Oh, you don't have a wife? No, no. Okay, <laughs> now, that's another reason to have this car. Right. There you go, okay, very cool. <laughs> now, now when you take people out to they go, it's hot in this thing? 
well, the weather's been pretty good. No, I know when the weather's <laughs> cold, I know it's going to be perfect. But in the summer, it's it's pretty. I've only had the car five months, oh, so I okay. haven't, I oh, haven't, all right. I so haven't I quite see. gotten to the summer yet. You should run for office. You make an excellent <laughs> politician. Now, we have four-wheel disc brakes. Yes. And they're girling, I think, aren't they? I don't know, actually. I think they are. I think okay. they are. I think that's right. You know, and I always love this. Well, this isn't the quilted leather, but it, it, it's similar to that where the transmission tunnel, everything is, is leather, and the car is not fiberglass, it's all aluminum, isn't it? Correct. Because this is really made the old-fashioned way on a buck, and a, Angelo, bang, 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 and Tony, and Tony, and Angelo, and the guys, and they just make a car. And it, it's, it's fascinating to watch, if you've ever seen how they do it. They just take a sheet of aluminum, and they bend it over a buck, and they hammer it. And, and look at the finish you get. Look how smooth it, I mean, it's amazing. Incredible to repair if you ever damage it, but it's truly, truly artisans. They really are. Uh, what else have we got here? Now, the 5300 stands for, I guess that would be a 5.3 liter. Correct. I mean, nobody thought of a 327 Chevy as in liters back in the day, so 5300, nobody knew what that meant. And Strata means what? Street version? Street versus Corsa. Street, Corsa which would be the race. Right. Uh, to me, this is the one to have because. The Corsa version is almost a little too crude for the street. And, and by any modest standard, this would be the racing version today. You have no power steering, no power brake. You have no, uh, obviously, traction control or any of that type of thing. It, it's just sort of, you know, man and machine, that kind of deal. I love where the handbrake is. I love how low you sit. Notice how the transmission tunnel is higher than the seat. I mean, you're just, this is really a low car. I, I, do you find yourself scraping a lot going over speed? No, the, the road clearance is pretty good. Yeah, yeah. But it, you, I almost have to look up a little because it, it is, right. you sit so low and you have great headroom. And this is almost as low as a GT40. Pretty uh, close. Pretty close. I mean, when you see these in period, in pictures from 1967, this is even next to a Stingray or, or like a Ford LTD. Oh my God, the, the roofs are up here on those things, you know. This is like ground hugging. It's really amazing. Uh, the beautiful steel. They did a wonderful job on the restoration. And those are true knockoff wheels, not phony knockoff right, wheels. Right, Campagnolan knockoff wheels, right. right. And this is something that was fairly new in 67, 66. You have the heated windscreen in the back. That I think was, that was an option, which yeah, the, that was a, oh, ooh, that was like a. <laughs> A heated windscreen. Yeah. Oh, really have to scrape? No, no, you turn the heater on and take the. Very cool. Well, I love the combination of the leather, the dark blue interior, and the light blue exterior. It's really just a beautiful, beautiful job. Was this restored in America or in Europe? It was restored in P Pisa in okay. Italy. In Italy, okay. And this is the original color combination, which is a Zuro Fiat. Okay. And it had a burgundy leather interior, which was unusual because most of them were black. Right. It was restored with the dark blue interior, and I don't have the heart to change it, but it would certainly look great in Bordeaux or, or, oh, it or looks, yeah, it, it looks it, great. You know, it looks great now. It looks fantastic. Uh, I mean, just, Look at this, these openings, the wheel openings. And what does it weigh? Do you know any idea? Probably high 2000s, but I really don't know the weight. Oh, I, I, I guess 2400, 2500 probably. I mean, it, it's extremely lightweight and it's like super like air construction, isn't it? It's all tubes. There's no sort of chassis chassis to it. It's all just, yeah, really something. And it was really interesting that he chose the 327 Chevy uh, back in the day because it's it's well, it's really the most world's most beautiful Corvette, isn't it? But not, it's not really a Corvette, like because the engine's much further back. Yeah, I mean it was really a groundbreaking car back in the day, as you said, one of the first to have the engine mid it well just a few inches forward of the, of the midpoint. You know? Right. Just fantastic. Come around the back, and of course the beautiful uh, round tail lights. I love the twin exhausts. No, it's even have a full size spare. Try and find that today. Just, just beautiful. Ah, just amazing. It's just. And everything fits so nice. I mean, this restoration is really beautiful. And this is all on the streetcar because these. Chrome pieces, that was not on the Corsa model, correct? Correct. Yeah, yeah. 
And I call all the little period touches, these bullet mirrors. Just, just a beautiful, and of course, being the Chevy running gear, I wouldn't say it was bulletproof, but certainly way more bulletproof than <clears throat> anything from Italy back in the day, because people forget, you know, nowadays you have a Lamborghini mirror, you go on the website and somebody's got mirror parts. But back when I first got my yellow mirror back in the 80s, you had to find somebody that spoke Italian, and, and they wrote a letter to Italy, then you waited weeks for somebody to write back, and talk to somebody, you, you, can, you just couldn't find parts for them, you know? So this, I'm surprised these didn't sell in greater numbers. Do you remember what they went for new, any idea? I really don't. They had to be pretty expensive. The Ferraris were 14 to 20,000, Mirrors were 22,000, which was like hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now, probably 10 to 15 times what it was. And I imagine this was probably right up there too. But Pizzerini wanted to race, didn't he? He, he built cars to support the racing. So he sold the road version to support the racing. And racing, of course, is ridiculously expensive. And that's probably where all the money went. How many did they make? Any idea? It's debated, but mm -hmm. they made about a, about 145 total Bizzarinis, some okay. of the courses, some of the A3Cs, which is the, is the predecessor of this car right. until he went on his own. I mean, he was really a race car lover. And I think this is finally, you know, he's, one of the great engineers of, of, yeah. of our time, and I think, um, or of the, excuse me, of the, of the 50s and 60s, right, right. he did the 250 GTO, so I think he finally said, I'm gonna make my car put my badge on it, and that's what he did, and, and it's, I think it's neat that he did the Lamborghini engine, but then he said, I, I love a Corvette motor, yeah. I'll save the money, and, and, and put this in, so. Yeah, and 140 cars is a lot back in the day, especially when you're hand making them. You know, don't forget, McLaren only made 64 road cars, other people got to 80, 75. So it was a growing concern and it was pretty successful. And then I don't know what happened. Was there some recession or some, t I, don't, I don't know what happened to the company. I'm sure there's a whole story there, but it was sad to see it go. But it's nice to know that I bet all 100 of them exist in some form. If you, have a, if you just have the serial number, somebody's rebuilding it. So it, they're that valuable these days. So very good. Can we take it for a ride? Oh, I'd love to. I would love to. Let's. let's Let's do it. <laughs> It's a very comfortable car. It's a little tricky to get in if you're a big guy, but once you're in it, there's plenty of room. I like how low you sit. I like how I've got plenty of headroom up here. I mean, you're looking directly at the license plate of the car in front of you. That's, that's how low this car is.
because the war was over, Italy needed the work, and, and you could buy cars like this, well, let's say a lot cheaper than you can now. I wouldn't say anything was ever a bargain, but much more reasonable. And so many of those old school artisans are still around. I was fortunate to know a bunch of them, one of them built my Duesenberg body. You know, the black one we did a few weeks ago, Marcel? He was one of those guys that came from that Coastville era. He handmade that beautiful Duesenberg body. But I mean, to make the buck out of wood and then hand hammer the aluminum over it, oh, really craftsman. Yeah, I just think these Weber's a little out of, and, and, you know, these are extremely tricky to set, to get them right. What happens if they sit for a while and, you know, the orifices are so tiny, they get blocked and, yeah. I'd run a can of sea foam through, through the gas tank. Sea foam is something I use a lot here. Uh, it works really well. Uh, it just cleans carburetors and fuel systems. I don't have a deal with them. I don't get any money. Nothing like that. And I buy it over the counter. It's just a product that I like, you know. I like to mention the product I like without people thinking I'm doing a uh, financial endorsement deal, you know. MTL, manual transmission loop, is another one I use. Works tremendously well. This engine generates a lot of heat here. When, uh, when Doug said, uh, it's a little warm, but I, I, that was an understatement. You can get an awful lot of heat coming through here. It's not terrible. If you're an enthusiast, believe me, it's well worth it to drive something like this. It just makes me laugh when you own one of these. Oh, and then he said, no, she got to go wrong. Mm-hmm. <laughs>